Hey guys, Mike with My Glass of Photography here, and today I want to talk about one of my all-time favorite uh, pieces of gear that I've invested in. Uh, I've got a couple of them. I've used them for several years now. When it was first announced, I giggled like a little girl because of, oh my gosh, the possibilities. It's um, something I use in almost every one of my shoots. Flash. It's this uh, Flashpoint AD200. So I'm going to try and do a review of this. Um, yeah, I'm a technical person, so I'm sure I'm going to go over that. I'm not going to be crazy with the numbers about it, but I do want to talk more about the usability of this thing, my experiences with it, um, what I found helpful, and a couple of things that are frustrating about it, actually, too. Um, but yeah, so I want to go down that list. Uh, one of the first things to know is that this is the Evolve uh AD200. Uh, it's the original. There's now the pro version. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but uh, one of the key things about this is that it's made by Flashpoint, or at least this version is. Now, I say this version because this is actually made by several different distributors, I think is probably the better way to put it. Um, Godox, Newer, Cheetah Stand, um, and then Flashpoint. Um, they're all the exact same flash. It's just who's selling it. Me personally, uh, I went with the Flashpoint one just because it's sold by Adorama, which is a U.S. retailer. So if something does happen, there's a slight warranty on here. Um, it's not like Canon or Nikon where if you buy something of theirs, there's a much better warranty system involved with it. Um, so if these do break, yeah, you got to pay for a little more out of pocket. Um, there's not really warranty to go with it. Um, I will say, though, this thing is pretty robust. I've dropped several of these, uh, or flash stands have fallen over because uh, gusts of wind, rowdy children, stuff like that. And, uh, I mean, they held together pretty well. Um, the only thing that broke on one of mine was the rear LCD here. Uh, and then I sent it to, I think the group is called MoLite, M-O-Lite. Uh, dot com and they actually do repairs for these things so uh, definitely check them out if you've got one of these that did break but anyways so going into the things that I love about this flash that are crazy helpful uh, number one is the form factor as you can see it's not terribly large um, it's actually the same size as a speed light fully extended okay um, mine's got the mag mod uh, part on it so ignore those I don't want to take it off um, but you can see like it's it's basically the same size I mean there's there's not much difference and the reason why that's pretty incredible is that this is three times as powerful as this same four factor three times the size holy crap uh, as a flash photographer that means everything to me because I always need more power out of my flashes. There's very rarely any times where I say, oh no, I need less. Because uh, I do a lot of on-location shooting. I do a lot of, uh, of photography outside in the bright sun using high-speed sync. Um, so it's really, really handy to have something that's this powerful. Um, so there's a lot of benefits to that. Uh, it's also great for in the studio. Uh, if I need, you know, if I'm shooting it with a larger depth of field, um, you know, and I need the extra juice. Again, the other benefit of having more power is that when you want to freeze motion, you actually want to use a lower flash power. So, you know, I can get better action or motion freezing by putting this at a lower power um, compared to this one at a lower power. So, I mean, like, relatively speaking, this would be, like, at a quarter. This one would be, like, I don't know, like a sixteenth quarter. Eight, yeah. That's how stops work. This would be at about a 16th of a power, which means the uh, flash duration pop is faster on this. So it freezes motion better. Uh, so if you're doing a lot of high speed action or just stuff moving very quickly, huge benefit right there. Uh, one of the other benefits to this that I really like is uh, the compatibility factor. So what Godox or Flashpoint or whoever, I, I usually say Godox, even though it's how you have Flashpoint. So what Flashpoint did that's really, really smart, or I'll say almost shook up the industry, honestly, was they made this flash, this flash, and their whole suite of other flashes work off the same trigger. Now, prior to Flashpoint coming out with these, that was actually unheard of. Uh, you had you know Canon and Nikon making their own on-camera flashes, which is effectively what this is, a speed light. Um, so it goes right on the hot shoot of the camera, 
and then if you wanted to use larger strobes uh, or bigger flashes, uh, you had to use someone else's system, which means you needed a completely different radio trigger, which was just infuriating. Uh, so now what Flashpoint did, like I said, was they made this, able to talk to this, able to talk to the big guns, um, all with one trigger. So like I can mix and match the lights that I use. Um, I can, you know, have a 400 watt second flash and this 200 watt second flash, uh, both using them to light the scene. And I can have this 60 watt flash, 80 watt, I think it's 60. Um, or again, technical numbers, yeah, all in the same scene, all contributing to my photograph. So that's really, really powerful, and it's something that's overlooked, but it's really nice to have that ecosystem. So if you're working with a lot of different uh, flashes in terms of like size and power ratings, it's really nice to have that full system that can talk to each other. So one of the other benefits of this I mentioned a little bit earlier is high-speed sync. So effectively what happens is at full power, your flash just does one giant poof, you know, flash. Right, and the max sync speed of your camera, eh, usually around 200, 250th of a second, um, that is fast enough where one pulse, it's the whole sensor is is exposed to the flash burst. Now, if you want to shoot at a faster shutter speed to darken the scene, and then say if you want to use a shallow depth of field uh, in bright sunlight, but increase your shutter speed, you then will get clipping, right? So it's where the shutter is moving faster than the flash pulse. So you'll get black bars across your image. So that means if you're outside and it's really bright and you want a shallow depth of field, you have to increase your shutter speed to get a proper exposure. Well, if you want to use flash, you have to use high speed sync so that you guarantee uh, you're getting an exposed shot evenly across the frame. So high speed sync, very, very helpful. Um, Another uh, benefit to these flashes is it's got groups and channels. I know that's a really like small deal and not everyone thinks about it, uh, but I do shoot weddings and I do work with other photographers who have a similar uh, brand or a lot of people have speed lights. So to make sure I'm not interfering with their shots, they're not interfering with my shots, I can put all my flashes on a separate channel. So it's just me, don't have to worry about it. And then groups are really awesome. Uh, again, I use a lot of flashes in my shots. Um, main light, key light, accent lights, all kinds of stuff. I, I, I do shots where I've got six flashes firing uh, to contribute to the f scene and they're all at different flash powers. They're all different, doing different things. So because of that, I need to be able to control which flash is which so I can say, hey, you flash over there, you're at this power. You flash over here, you're at this power. So groups are really helpful for that. And I think this does up to six, which is really great. Okay, so the next huge benefit of this is battery life. Oh, yes. Um, it was a bigger deal with the speed lights uh, because yeah, a Canon speed light, you'll get maybe a hundred snaps at full power uh, before the batteries are toast, which as a wedding photographer, as a studio photographer, that's just not gonna cut it. Uh, with these flashes, um, you get, I think it's like almost 500 shots off a single battery charge at full power, which is ludicrous, because uh, I, I don't know how many times I shoot 500 frames at full power ever in a single session. So. That means any other given session where I'm usually working at like half or quarter power or much lower, I never have to worry about the battery on this. It just goes. Um, and on a wedding day, that's amazing. Um, I can shoot like two, two and a half weddings off a single charge on these flashes and the speed lights uh, with these large rechargeable batteries. They are massive and they're amazing. I still have spares, but I don't think I've ever pulled one out, like ever, unless I shot like a triple header wedding weekend and I just didn't have time to charge my batteries. And it's still like this thing survived until the third wedding, like the start of the reception after we done portraits outside, like mind blowing. Um, it, worth its weight in gold, just in that respect. So another feature about this that I really love is that the heads are swappable. You can change them out. Um, so this is the typical uh, Fresnel lens, uh, standard speed light head, no big deal. Um, you've got this bare bulb head as an option. I never use this. I just don't. So it, it has it. It's cool. I don't use it. 
Um, but one of the other things that is kind of the benefit of this is that because I can have several of these heads, I got one with MagMod on it, one without. Because some soft boxes, at least when I was starting, um, the Bowens mount, I can't get the MagMod shoe through the Bowens mount. So uh, the, the modifiers I use now have a zipper on the bottom so I can reach my hand through and connect it. Uh, and the reason why I do that is so I can slap on gels because the MagMod system is great for that. Uh, otherwise, you know, if I, there's no zipper on the softbox or the light modifier, um, I have to use the regular Fresnel lens head, put it in there, and if I want just standard light, cool, um, it works great, but I do gel my lights a lot, uh, so having the ability to um, quickly swap to the other head um, and use the magma gel system um, on any softbox or any light modifier is amazing. Um, I do highly recommend checking that out. So that's one of the benefits of uh, using a not MagMod softbox is you can still use um, the MagMod heads uh, to gel your stuff. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend having several of these if you shoot like MagMod or something like that so you can swap them out depending on your softbox light modifier that. The rear LCD is uh, it's pretty easy to see. Um, the buttons are good. There's nothing particularly, it does what it's supposed to do, right? And I think that's, that's what matters. It's clear, it works. You've got different modes, the groups, the channels. Yeah, it, it, it does what it's supposed to. Um, it's pretty visible in super bright sunlight. Um, not always, but it's, it's pretty good. Okay. Uh, as far as downsides to this flash that I don't like, there's really not a lot. I kind of mentioned earlier, I wish the LCD was a little bit brighter, easier to see um, in bright sunlight. It's pretty good. It's not the best. Um, it's only firmware updates are through PC. Uh, I'm a Mac user. A lot of the creative world are Mac users. So the fact that I can only update the firmware using a PC sucks. Um, Luckily, I have them for work, so I just, you know, hook up my flashes every now and then to my work computer, and it's great. Uh, shh, don't tell my boss. So there's that. Um, the other thing that's kind of quirky about this is whenever I'm bouncing light using one of these. So that means um, if I don't, if I want a really big light source uh, to make it look like window light or soft light, something like that, I will take my light, point at a big white wall shoot it into the wall so that it bounces off that giant light source and now looks like big, you know, giant modifier to illuminate uh, my subject, which is really, really handy. Um, the only weird thing about that is anytime I bounce the light with this flash, it overheats really quickly. I don't know why. I don't understand, but it does. It, it's just a weird quirk. So if you're bouncing light a lot, um, these tend to be temperamental and overheat very quickly, um, which is another thing that I would say is that these flashes do overheat a little bit faster than I would prefer. I'm used to working with uh, Canon speed lights, which just go forever, um, and they really never overheat these, again, a little more temperamental. But if you're blasting full power, that's really the only issue. If you're slower and shooting at lower flash powers, it's uh, not as big a deal normally. Bright sunlight, you're still screwed. But you're shooting in bright sunlight. They do have the now like the pro version of this. Um, the benefits of the pro version over this are it's slightly better color control or color consistency between shots um, and the flash sync is a little bit faster. So if you're trying to freeze motion, it's better for that. Um, and if you're you know a high-end studio photographer where color consistency is like critical, much better for that. Otherwise, this is like $100 cheaper, and I can't tell the damn difference. So yeah, that's uh, that's all I got to say about this thing. Um, hope you found it helpful. Hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, yeah, so I'm Mike with Mike Glatzer Photography. Cheers.